Okay guys, this is not going to be a very long video, but welcome back to the channel anyway. Today I'm just going to be showing you how to configure and how to set up an ICOM with use of ISTD. Now obviously as you know I've had my ICOM for ages, but a lot of people keep asking me how to configure the ICOM with ISTD and how to use it with NCS Expert as many of you don't know. Um, you can't use the ICOM the same way as you do with ISTD, which automatically connects to it. So today I'm going to show you how you do that. Uh, you're going to need another two applications, obviously I do have them if any of you need them. For the icon but today is going to be about if you are using a cable and you want to switch over to an icon you can do i'm going to show you how to do that and if you haven't been using a cable and you want to just set up an icon for the first time that was going to be shown as well so what we're going to do is i'm going to go out to the car we're going to plug everything up i'm going to show you how to plug everything up and then we're going to crack on and i'm going to show you how you configure it okay guys so as you can see this is what the icon will look like this is the icon and obviously that's the icon box now I'm going to show you how you configure it. So you've got your box here, and obviously all you're going to do is you're going to open these flaps right here, which can be shown. And obviously you're going to have Ethernet and the USB. Now the USB one is for the most connector. You get you have the USB lead, which is here. And you connect that USB lead into that and into your most socket on your E60. So that's what you use for the most connector when you're programming with Vista P. The next one you're going to want to configure is this lead here, which goes to the bottom here, as you can see, and that's for the OBD port. So now what we're going to go and do is I'm going to go out to the car and we're going to now configure the ICOM and I'm going to show you guys how to plug it up to the car and how to get it running with Vista D. So let's go and do that right now. So as you'll see guys, I've got the computer on right now and we've got the leads ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit you down right here. Hopefully you can see me there. I've got the shooting in wide angle. And obviously, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see me setting up this icon. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pick up your icon. Then you're going to want to connect it up like that right there. Then screw it in. Make sure it's properly screwed in. Otherwise, the connectors will come out. Now, as you can tell, it's got a click release and a click release in. So you want to click it in so it doesn't come out. So the cable's tightly in. Now, what you want to do is get your Ethernet cable, which is like it here, right here like so. And then what you want to do is pull it in to the icon. Now once that's done, you want to find your OBD port and you want to plug it in, which obviously as you know I'm using E60, so what you're going to do is plug it straight into here. And that's in. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your Ethernet cable, which is right here. Now as you can see it's flashing, saying system. But obviously it can't pick up that because I haven't got it plugged in. And then what you're going to do is plug it into your Ethernet, which is right here in the side. And you plug that one in. And now it will say what LAN, and then it will start communicating with the car. Once it's all communicated, we'll be off and running. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open this today. And as I can hear it, the hard drive's moving around inside it, which is meant to be. So now what we'll do, we'll take the camera, and I'm gonna show you. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna look for ISTA. Now, if you've got this configured for a cable, I'm gonna show you the settings from being configured from a cable, because most people do the switch over from the cable to the to the icon so this is the way i'm going to show you now we're just going to wait for that to load and once that loads we'll be back and i'll show you how to do it okay guys so as you'll see it's now loaded up now what you want to do is make sure you have your key in the position two on the ignition on with this now what you're going to want to go to is vehicle interface and you're going to want to change it to dealer organization icon local area network and ethernet as preferred communication yes then what you're going to want to click is okay and you don't want to click anything else you just want to click yes now what it's going to do is, you'll see here, we're going to read out the vehicle data, which it will do like so. And now we'll see the icon pop up, if it reads in it, which it is. As you can see there, it's reading the icon. So you just click on that, and then you just want to click set up connection to the car. Well, as you can see now, all the communication lights are flashing and going ballistic which is what they're meant to do. And that's reading the car, as you'll see here. But there you go. And that's how you set up an icon for ISTA D. So as you can see, it's fully working. Everything's reading properly. It's fully up to date. Uh, another thing is if your icon isn't up to date, ISTA D will tell you and update it automatically for you, by the way. So um, that's another thing that you should be aware of. It will update it for you immediately. So you won't have to worry. So now if we come out of that, we'll leave that one. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you now how to set up NTS Expert with your icon. Okay, so the next one is you're going to want to you're going to need this app either Easy Connect or iTool Radar. Now, if I go to NTS Expert, I'm just going to show you quickly. You'll see it won't even find the car. So if I was to load a profile up 
and then just say co control unit. Then <clears throat> I'm just going to show you just so you know it doesn't work. We're going to click E6 there and we'll do the cast. Now you're going to see no communication. So that's the no communication fault. So that's what I'm saying to you. You need to have these apps to connect to it. So what you need to do is go to Easy Connect. Then what you're going to do is change it to remote. Then what you're going to need to do is you need to get the ICOM's IP address, which I use iTool Raider for, which is the easiest thing to get the IP address, as you're going to see now. It will load up and it will give me the IP address of the ICOM. So that's the IP address right there, 169254 So what you want to do is you're going to want to get the IP and you're going to do 169.254. Dot nine two dot three eight, and then what you're going to want to go to is click base. Then you're going to want to go down to icon lock, as you can see there, and just click icon lock. It will connect to its IP address <coughs> via the LAN, and as you can see, icon locked. So that's the icon now locked. Now, if we go to NCS Expert, which I'm going to show you, now if we just click low profile default because we don't want to do anything this is just a test we'll just click there e60 now we'll just go to here to the cast and as you'll see it reads out everything properly now that's how you use this if you want to use WinKFP, NCS Expert <coughs> or any of that thing I mean you can use iTool Radar and lock the icon but I choose to use Easy Connect iTool Radar is quite easy just release it and reserve it but I don't always use that one. I prefer to use Easy Connect, and it's the one that I always pick, recommend using. So now what we're going to do is unlock it, and always make sure you unlock the icon because you, otherwise it will be locked, and you won't be able to use it Vista D, and you have to keep switching backwards and forwards. Now another thing is with Vista P, you cannot use Vista P without these icons, and with these icons you need a different loader. You cannot use the loader with the Enet or the STD OBD, which runs off the local area connection, you, you, which manipulates the icon. You need to use a different loader to use an icon. So I'm just making you lot guys aware now. It's a different loader for it's the P completely. What it is. So this is how you set up the icon as you can see here. It's completely configured. This is the icon in, in total. As you'll see, that's the icon running. And this is how us pros do it anyway, which is exactly like that. So now you get the drift guys. This is how you set up an icon. So we'll be back in a second and well, let's close this up. So there you are guys. I've just shown you now how to set up the icon with Vista D and how to connect to it using NCS Expert and if you have to use any of the other applications like WinKFP or NCS Expert or IMPA for instance. Now you have to keep doing that full on so you'd connect to it with Easy Connect and then you'd come out of it, you have to disconnect the icon and then go into Ista D and connect it that way manually. And Ista P is the same, as I told you you need a different loader, Ista P just recognise the icon, it's not like the loaders that most people have where you connect via DCAN cable and you've got to connect it, no it recognized the icon straight away and as you saw the icon shows the voltage that's another question i keep getting asked why doesn't ista d show the voltage of the car if you're using a cable a decan cable it will not show the voltage of the car unless you've got a voltage emulator you need to use an icon my icon is the only thing that shows the voltage of the car and a decan cable you will not see the voltage of the car at all so that's another point next point is do you need an icon not really unless you're going to be doing hundreds of cars like i do and you need you, you do need it for f series you're not going to really benefit from um, an icon. A D cable is going to do you if you're only doing your own basic cars day to day. Another thing is, do you do do not try and use a battery charger. I know I keep hearing this. Oh, I got a battery charger. Battery charger cannot maintain the current that Ista P wants. Ista P fluctuates through a high voltage and a low voltage all the time when programming, and you can't maintain it with a battery charger. We had this problem with Nathan. Nathan trying to flick the battery charger on, flick the battery charger off, maintain the battery power all the time, and it just don't work. <clears throat> it doesn't have it. You need to have a voltage stabilizer. Yes, they're expensive. Here they're about 300 pound. In your country, they're about $500. I know it's expensive, but that's what it takes to be in this, this game. If you want to do it properly, I'm giving you the advice you need to do this properly. And a voltage stabilizer is the only thing you can use to do, to do programming successfully with Ista P. If you want to program your whole car, fine, but do it with a, a voltage stabilizer. If you don't want to use a voltage stabilizer, you just want to use a battery charger, use Wing KFP. But you're not going to benefit from the whole integration level updates. That's the only that's the only difference. And most Ista P wants to do integration level. And like I say, Wing KFP don't do that. We've got to remember Wing KFP is um, assembly line software. Ista D is dealer level software. There's a whole difference, and so is this to P, and that's what I try and explain to a lot of people. But as I say, the decan gable suit you guys who's using it. But if you want 
the full package in one deal, Icom is the way forward. Because as you, as you know, if you do F-Series cards, you need an Ethernet OBD anyway. So you need to buy another OBD, which I have it myself, but I've also got Icom as you see. And the Icom is needed for doing certain features, which I use the Icom a lot. Sometimes I use the cable, because the Icom as you see is too big and bulky to carry around. So sometimes I will use the, uh, the cable. Like if I'm going away with the laptop or that lot, I usually take the lead instead of the icon because it's just too much too much cables too much leads and it's it's easy to get damaged and you don't want to end up damaging it because that thing is expensive when it goes wrong to have to buy another whole new unit and then wait for it so that's it for today guys um i'm hoping it's going to help you i mean there's not many videos showing you how to set up the icon but i've just shown you in you know less time than what it takes normal people to sell it up so that's it for today guys it's bmw dr dean here please like share and subscribe and goodbye